Hi, Scott Fresner with Tibas Network. I want to talk to you today about uh, a very quick tip about converting files from Photoshop into halftone dots. Now, you know that I sell a rip called T-Rip, and there's rips out there. Rips take a, a file like a Photoshop file, a vector file from AI or Corel Draw, and they convert any areas that are gray levels into halftone dots. But sometimes you're in Photoshop, and maybe you haven't got a rip, and you've got a file with lots of gray levels in it. Maybe you've separated it, and you really want to just convert the file to halftone dots and print it to your regular inkjet printer using the highest photo quality setting, which lays down more ink or maybe print it to your laser printer that hasn't got a rip for halftones. You want to somehow force this design to be halftoned. And what you'll read a lot of times is, oh, I can do that in Photoshop. You simply go to image mode and you go to bitmap and you convert to bitmaps. Well, that's true, but it's going to give you a ratty halftone dot. A rip is called a raster image processor, meaning it takes a file from Photoshop or AI or Corel, and it converts that file to rasters or pixels, and it makes an image. Basically, it makes an image that it then sends to the printer. But it makes that image at high res. Uh, it makes it at the same resolution as the printer. That way, the halftone dots are clean. So the secret for converting files to halftone dots in Photoshop is to output at a higher resolution. And I'll show you the difference between a file that's been converted at 300 dpi to a halftone dot as compared to a file that's been, convert, been uh, sampled at 440 dpi to a halftone dot. The halftone dots are much cleaner. That's a real dot or an ellipse depending on what you've chosen. And it's real simple to do in Photoshop. Let's take a look at it. Now this technique works with any single grayscale file, uh, or it'll work with separations if you convert each of the channel separations in Photoshop into individual files. And that's easy to do in Photoshop. It's called splitting channels. Now in the old days, in earlier versions, versions CS5 and earlier, you had to remember what the channel order was once you split it, because Photoshop would name it channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, etc. But in CS6 and CC, uh, they've changed it now so it actually names the file, uh, the file name at least the color name, what's in the channel header, so at least you know what it is. So what you do first of all is we need to make these individual channel, these channels individual files. We're going to go to split channels, and it kind of stacks them like a deck of cards. And now it says AC bucket with name of the file, and it gives me the actual header information. That's really cool, because now I know that this was the highlight white channel. Now this channel, if we read it with the info panel, uh, reads 100% where it says Atlantic City, and it reads different gray levels in other areas. And if I zoom in on this file, you can see that it's gray levels. It's not halftoned yet. It may look halftoned, but those are just the pixels. And we need to convert this file to halftone dots. Now, conventional thinking, let me duplicate this so I can come back and do the same thing with a different file. I'm going to put this aside for a second. Conventional thinking, and actually someone the other day told me that, that he was talking to one of the industry uh, experts and he got this advice and it was actually not quite right. Conventional thinking says if we go to image mode, bitmap, and simply leave the resolutions the same and make it halftone screen and then tell it the line count. The angle, and as you all know, I'm a very big fan of 25 degrees, ellipse dot shape, 50 halftone line count frequency is fine. We could go 55 or even 65. Let's do 50 for this. If we just leave it at this and we say, okay, Photoshop cooks and converts the file to halftone dots. But look at how ready that dot is. That is a ready dot. That's because that dot was only 300 dpi. We took a file that was 300 dpi. When your inkjet printer will print 1440 to 2880 dpi, higher resolution, we need to be at the same resolution as your printer. Now let's move this file out of the way. I'll bring in the dupe that I, that I made of it. Again, this is not halftone now. Now if we go to image mode, bitmap, and we tell it that we want it to be 1440, for the output resolution, which means Photoshop will sample this file up, convert to a halftone dot, and we're going to get a much cleaner halftone. We say OK. We'll leave it for the same frequency angle and dot shape. And now if we zoom in, it's a much cleaner dot. By simply upsampling the file. So the comparison is we have a real ratty dot here, not even a dot actually because we left it at 300 dpi. So make sure that when you're making your own halftones in Photoshop that you could now print to a, a device that doesn't have a rip, make sure that you change the output resolution to much higher. You could go 2880 and get a really clean dot.
So that's it. Just don't forget that this is a great tip if you remember that the output resolution needs to be much, much higher. Match it to your printer, 1440 uh, or 2880, and you'll be a happy camper with a clean halftone dot that burns a much better screen. Thanks for watching.